The first one that we, we list on the, on the, in the workbook, you'll see yeah, animal products. So what animal products are there involved in perfumery? Musk. Musk. Yep. What's musk from? Yeah, it's, it's from a, a very small, shy deer. And then civet. From a... Yeah, it's, it's not really a cat, but it's, you might say it's more like a feral cat. It's a cat-like, yeah, rodent. Castorium from the beaver. And ambergris, ambergris. From whale vomit. OK. <laughs> It's the blue sperm whale. The blue sperm whale eats cuttlefish. Right. And inside the, uh, the cuttlefish, there are these beak-like structures. Right. If you keep budgerigars, we use those beaks in the cage for them to sharpen their um, beaks on. Now, when they're in the stomach of the whale, they scratch the, the stomach. It's natural. They're, they're going along swimming in the sea, and they eat cuttlefish, yeah? And then the, um, the beaks scratch the stomach wall, it bleeds, gets infected, it produces pus, yellow pus. Yeah? And the pus collects around the bone. And then it happens again, and it gets a bit more, happens again, and it gets a bit more. And eventually, there's a lump. And the lump inside the stomach is black, smells absolutely foul, yeah? because it's like basically like um, Excrem excrement, yeah, feces. And that lump could grow to as much as 50 kilos, I think, is the biggest that's ever been recorded. But usually it's a lump about a kilo, two kilos. And we don't actually know, I don't think anybody's actually seen a whale <laughs> <laughs> regurgitate. <laughs> well, that's right. Or it comes out the back end, yeah? We actually don't know really where it, where it comes out. But it's called whale vomit. So when it hits the, the sea, it's this horrible black, stinking mass. Yeah? And then it floats in the sea, and the sunshine hits it, the waves wash over it, and slowly that bad blackness disappears, the smell gets softer and softer. And after a few months, and the longer it's in the sea the better, after a few months, Hopefully, eventually, it finds its way to a beach. And those beaches, it finds its way usually in the southern hemisphere, New Zealand, Australia, uh, South Africa, uh, the more, more common places that it's found, sometimes in Hawaii. And by the time it's got to the coast, it's that, that it's, it has a very soft smell. Yeah? Very soft, powdery, it's a bit waxy. It's a grey colour, so it's grey amber. And has this lovely softness, this velvety softness, when you add to a perfume, gives uh, this, the depth to, to a perfume. A piece of ambergris, an auction, um, if it's a true ambergris, the grey amber, gris means grey in French, it can, collect, it can fetch as much as $30,000 a kilo. So it's a treasure to find. Yeah. Sorry. Where where it's come from? But the process of it, you think of the long term. Yeah. And the sad thing is, is of course that that the use of ambergris is is associated with being an animal product, and of course it is. Yeah. But people are like very against using it because it's an animal product. But we do we have nothing to do with mistreatment of the animal. The, the ambergris that can be recovered from the stomach, stomach of a whale if it's harvested for food is such bad quality, yet the, the price is very, very low. So it's, it's a different, it's a, you know, it's a thousand dollars a kilo as opposed to thirty thousand dollars a kilo. That's the sort of range you're looking at. But because of that use of that, that one, then the other one is also sort of affected. 
if, by people that are worried about mistreatment of animals. It can be harvested, if it's harvested naturally from a beach, then obviously nobody is affected. <laughs> oud is, is um, agar wood, yeah. Um, it's caused by the infection of a bug in, in, in the tree, which turns it, makes a fungus grow. So we, c we say it's a plant material, but it's definitely on the border, yeah. And it actually has an animal character in its smell, so... I, I, I put it in a plant, plant but uh, yeah. Um, we can, yeah. We have, yeah. We have agar wood. Yeah. yeah the problem, the problem with with um, if you allow nature to take its course with agar wood, it can take many years for the tree to become infected. So if you want to make an industry of it, it's quite hard. Um, so what they do now is they uh, some methods have been developed of. of drilling holes in it and injecting uh, food for bugs so the bugs go in and yeah and you help them to infect the the trees so trees instead of if you wanted agar wouldn't completely naturally it would probably be 30 40 year old tree at least uh, but you can harvest a tree maybe after seven seven or eight years if you infect it uh, synthetically but the quality is not the same you get from a tree that's um, infected naturally it has a very, very rich character, whereas the, the, uh, the, the younger trees have this green, sort of raw, raw wood, wood note to them. Uh, okay, so castorium. From the beaver. Unfortunately, the, the beaver is killed in this case. The, uh, in Canada and Siberia, China, main sources for castorium. Where there are areas where forestry is really important, beavers are a pest, because what do beavers like to do? Build dams, and they cut down trees to build dams. And so they're regarded as a pest. So the Canadian government, every forestry commissioner, whatever it's called, will every year issue a cull order for 100,000, 200,000, even 500,000 beavers to be culled, to be killed, yeah, to protect the forest. The beavers are killed. A gland is kept from the back of the beaver. It's the gland that it coats its fur with to make it waterproof. Yeah? And it has this very strong leathery, leathery character. Civet. Civet is probably the saddest one of the, of the lot, really. Because civet is a it's a, it's a feral cat, or a, um, it it uses an ex exudation from its back end, which it goes around on trees and wipes on the trees. You know, it goes up to the tree and then marks its territory. In theory, you could collect the civet from the trees, go around and follow it, but that's much too much like hard work. So usually the, the civet is captured, put into a cage that it cannot turn around in. And because it will produce more civet paste when it's agitated, yeah, they poke it with sticks. Yeah? And then every day they go along and they scrape it off. So civet is the, the saddest because the, the animal is, is effectively tortured. Um, India, uh, it's, it's even produced in Thailand. In Thailand, it's not quite as bad because what they do is they get a small cage to put the civet in and they put a bar in the middle. So it's like a go-go bar, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> the civet, the civet goes up and dances around the bar and then wipe, <laughs> wipes the back of it, yeah? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, I've, I've seen them, people keep them. And there are traders in Chinatown in Bangkok where they'll take 15 grams, which is a, what we call a one baht weight, and they'll sell it to the traders in for 500 baht, about uh, uh, 
I think in dollars, sixteen dollars for an ounce, half an ounce. Yeah, fifteen grams. It's a it's 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 a brown extrudation. Basically, it looks like extrument. Yeah, but it looks like that. But it's it's an oily. It's, it has an oily character. Yeah, and it's used for marking territories. Yeah. Would that get left or all life is Well, that's right. I mean, as long as it produces civet. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a not a nice work, not, not a nice thing, nice thing to do. Last but not least, the musk deer. The musk deer, a very shy, small deer, originally found in Tibet. Has a small pod at the back, the male deer has a small pod at the back, which is full of seeds. And I have some of the seeds here. You can have a, have a sniff. This is this is like highly illegal. This stuff, so it's <laughs> yes, it's illegal to trade in it, legal to buy it, legal to sell it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the the last time I was, uh, it, it's banned. The trading is banned. The trading still goes on. It's done by somebody in Hong Kong, Chinese guy, and. Uh, it's all, all underground. Some companies still use it in perfumes. You still smell it in Chanel perfumes. And it has a dis very distinct character. But if you try to analyze it by GCMS, etc., it would be very hard to find because it's in such tiny amounts. Yeah? So it would be difficult to, very difficult to prove it. But after, if you keep a perfume for 10 or 20 years, the musk character develops more and more and more. <laughs> And becomes very, very evident, and you can smell it immediately. It doesn't smell anything like musk. Really? I don't know. It doesn't smell that pleasant. No, no. Real musk, real musk smells animalic. It doesn't smell like the synthetic musks. So how long is this musk? Sorry? How long is this? This, this, this one's fairly recent. This has been, this has been purchased. This was actually not purchased by me. It was purchased by one of our customers. And he gave it to us this is as a sample. Natural. No, this is natural. natural. Yeah, these are, these are the little grains that you get inside a musk pod. Sorry. Yeah. Oh no, no. I was I was going to come on to I was going to come on to that. Yeah. Now, because the trade is illegal, the last time that I was offered musk was well over twenty years ago. It was ninety thousand pounds a kilo. Yeah. Um, since then, there are reports that it's farmed in India and China and Russia. But the, the farms are very, very secret because the trade is still illegal. I don't know. I think it's, in, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's individual, the EEC and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, then you can do it, yeah. The same as they do with deer velvet and yeah, things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, but what's, what's the problem? What's the problem if they did it now openly? And it's, it was successfully farmed? Uh, there are very few, there are very few. And I mean, if a Tibetan farmer saw a saw a musk deer in another mountain, that musk deer would be dead. Yeah, because that's worth like two years' salary for him for, for one deer. Yeah. The price will go down. Yeah. If, if, it's, if it's successfully farmed, the price will go down. Yeah. Sorry? Still pretty good. Yeah, still pretty good. Yeah. 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 Well, it's possible also, yeah, because yeah, the same thing with agar wood. When you farm something, uh, you try to, you, you ma you're looking at the bottom line, you're not really looking at the quality so much. Sure. Yeah. It's a business. A business. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants everything to be the same everywhere, else, everywhere, so. Animal products, um, the, another one you could include, uh, maybe is beeswax. 
that's an alternative, that's another one. Beeswax is, um, you, t you take the beeswax from the hive and you just basically wash the wax in alcohol and the, the volatile oils dissolve in the alcohol. Yeah. And what kind of odor does it have? Sorry? What kind of odor does that beeswax have? Uh, like beeswax, it smells just like, like the beeswax it comes from. The problem with, the problem with beeswax is that depending on the, what the bees harvest on, which flowers they ha it has a different odor. So it's very difficult to get a standard quality of beeswax. Yeah? Um, and uh, I learned the hard way when I was um, with a company called Norda, which has long since disappeared in the 70s, American company. And I created, my first success with them was a, a perfume for a, a shoe polish, and it contained 1% of beeswax absolute. And then when we went to buy the beeswax absolute, it wasn't available. Why did you put perfume in shoe polish? Makes no sense. Communication. Yeah, but you don't smell your shoe. You do. You do. You smell. You smell everything. Yeah. Why? Why would you put perfume into a uh, a shoe polish? Yeah. You. Not. It, it sells the product. Yeah. And it. Yeah, it I mean, it distinguishes the product. Yeah, it gives you something that's distinctive and makes you like Kiwi more than some other brand. Yeah. <laughs> Is Kiwi from Australia, the shoe polish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want a honey type character, we use the beeswax. There's, uh, to my knowledge, there's no extract f of, uh, of like a honey absolute or something, but it's usually from the, the beeswax because the beeswax um, has very fairly low value, so it can be extracted profitably, whereas honey is uh, an expensive commodity. Is the beeswax, does it smell animal or does it smell like human? More like honey. More like, but it, de it depends on which flower the, the bees harvest them. Not really, an it's not an animalic smell, no. no, no. You're unlikely to find more than about 0.01% of an animal product in a, in a perfume, used only in trace amounts.